I thought this thing was supposed to be efficient because the hassle that's going on, ka. Hello people, it's your boy TSFC and welcome to another video of TSFC Reacts. In today's video, we are going to be looking at what you need before you apply for an e-passport. What you need to know. So to start off, um, wait a minute. As you can see, the footage is a bit mixed up. Uh, right now it's uh, night time and I'm doing this uh, filming, obviously, because during the day I was quite busy. So yeah, this is the best time I can get this bit of filming done. Then hopefully the next day uh, I get more filming done. And yeah, this is why. So you're going to see the video in bits and pieces. But yeah, it's easier to get an e-passport. Like it's easier to apply for an e-passport when you're in H-Town, Harare. As compared to like if you're in Bulawayo or... We are like in Mutari or Wangi, right? So if you are in any of those cities, you would have to then make a trip to come to Harare to then apply for your e-passport. And as thought-provoking as it is, uh, that $20 application fee, which was said to have been scraped, um, I heard it's back now and it's mandatory, it's required that you pay $20, you know, along with, you know, the passport you want, whether you want, like, the ordinary passport, $100, or you want the emergency passport, $200. So, your 100 then becomes 120 because of this application fee that's back, and 220 for the emergency passport because, yeah. <laughs> this this thing is back. If you're in diaspora and you want to apply for an e-passport, you actually have to get someone who's here in Zim to like like you have to give them the details for your documents, and then they apply for the passport on your behalf. If I'm not mistaken, because like there's no facility right now in the diaspora to help you guys in terms of like applying for the e-passport if you're gonna apply for a real passport it's you apply for the traditional passport but one thing that is um that has been confirmed is that uh you the passport that you have right now the traditional passport um you can have it you can use it up until you know it's expired date so this um this whole deadline of you know having to get an e-passport by december 2023 it's not there it's not there you can have your traditional passport and trade and trade <laughs> you can have your traditional passport until it expires so yeah if you have a passport that's like expiring in like 2028 i guess yeah you can have it up until that time and yeah it's optional whether you want to get the e-passport now or you know later yeah it now becomes optional it doesn't become compulsory to get the e-passport now um another point is that if you have if uh if your old passport was like stolen you have to get a report from the police when you want to apply for the e-passport. So yeah, that's the information I know. I don't want any smoke related to this issue. I'm also getting this information from other people. So yeah, that's what I can say. So looking at documents and fees for adults, you need to bring your id and a copy of your id original birth certificate and a copy of that old or expiring passport and a copy of that or children under the age of 18 parents id and birth certificate 
of parents and a copy of each birth certificate of the child or id if they are old enough and a copy of those documents as well old and old expiring passport and a copy of that and so with that guys uh we come to the end of today's video um i'll see you guys in the next video and yeah without further ado stay safe mask up goodbye